A feral child, also called a wild child, is a human who has lived isolated from human contact from a very young age and has had very little or no experience of human care, behavior, or language. There are several confirmed cases and other speculative ones. Feral children may have also experienced severe trauma or abuse before being abandoned or running away. They are sometimes the subjects of folklore and legends, typically portrayed as having been raised by animals. In today's upload, we're going to look at two very interesting cases of possible feral children. Peter the Wild Boy Peter the Wild Boy was a boy from Hanover in northern Germany who was found in 1725 living wild in the woods near Hamelin, the town of Pied Piper legend. The boy, of unknown parentage, had been living an entirely feral existence for an unknown length of time. Surviving by eating forest flora, he walked on all fours, exhibited uncivilized behavior, and could not be taught to speak any language. He is now believed to have suffered from the very rare genetic disorder Pitt-Hopkins syndrome. Peter was found in the Hertzfeld forest by a party of hunters led by George I while on a visit to his Hanover homeland and brought to Great Britain in 1726 by order of his daughter-in-law, Caroline of Ansbach, the Princess of Wales. Life in London After Peter's transportation to Britain, curiosity and speculation concerning Peter was excited in London. The craze was the subject of a biting satire by Jonathan Swift and of another entitled The Most Wonderful Wonder That Ever Appeared to the Wonder of the British Nation, which has been attributed to Swift and John Aberthnod. Daniel Defoe also wrote on the subject in his pamphlet Mere Nature Delineated. James Burnett, Lord Monboto, in his Origin and Progress of Language, presents Peter as an illustration of his theory on the evolution of the human species. Caroline, Princess of Wales, took an interest in Peter's welfare, and in 1726, after the initial public curiosity began to subside, she arranged for Dr. Arbuthnot to oversee his education. All efforts to teach him to speak, read, or write failed. The interior designer and painter William Kent included a depiction of Peter and a large painting of King George I's court that today hangs on the east wall of the King's Staircase at Kensington Palace in London. Peter is shown wearing a green coat and holding oak leaves and acorns in his right hand. Life in North Church After he was discharged from the supervision of Dr. Arbuthnot, he was entrusted to the care of Mrs. Trichborn, one of the Queen's bedchamber women, with a handsome pension annexed to the charge. Mrs. Trichborn usually spent a few weeks of every summer at the house of Mr. James Finn, a yeoman farmer, at Axter's End in the parish of North Church, Hertfordshire. Peter was left there in the care of Mr. Finn, who was allowed £35 a year for his support and maintenance. After the death of Mr. Finn, Peter was transferred to the care of James' brother, Thomas, at another farmhouse called Broadway, where he lived with several successive tenants of that farm and with the same government pension to the time of his death. In late summer of 1751, Peter went missing from the Broadway farm and could not be traced. Advertisements were placed in newspapers offering reward for his safe return. On the 22nd of October, 1751, a fire broke out in the parish of St. Andrews in Norwich. As the fire spread, 
the local gal became engulfed in smoke and flame. The frightened inmates were hastily released, and one aroused considerably curiosity on account of his remarkable appearance. Excessively shrewd and strong, and the nature of the sounds he made, which led some to describe him as an orangutan. Some days later, he was identified as Peter the Wild Boy, possibly through a description of him in the London Evening Post. He was returned to Thomas Finn's farm and had a special leather collar with his name and address made for him to wear in the future, should he ever stray again. Peter lived to an estimated 70 years of age. He was visited in 1782 by the Scottish philosopher and judge James Burnett, and was said to have a healthy complexion with a full white beard, and apparently understood what was said to him, but was himself only capable of saying the words Peter and King George, and humming a few songs. There is a portrait of the wild boy depicting a handsome old man with a white beard in Caulfield's portraits of remarkable persons. Death and Burial Peter died the 22nd of February, 1785, and is buried in North Church. His grave can still be seen in the churchyard of St. Mary's Church, North Church, directly outside the main door to the church. On the 20th of February, 2013, it was announced by the Department for Culture, Media, and Sport that the grave was to be given grade 2 listing on the advice of English heritage. In 2007, a blue heritage plaque was placed at the Wildman Pub in Bedford Street near St. Andrews in Norwich, commemorating Peter and his association with the district. Modern Assessment In 2011, the condition that affected Peter the Wild Boy was suspected to be chromosomal disorder, Pitt-Hopkins syndrome, a condition identified only in 1978, nearly 200 years after Peter's death. The various physical attributes of Peter's which are evident in the Kensington Palace portrait have been matched to the condition, such as his curvy Cupid's bow lips, his short stature, his coarse curly hair, drooping eyelids, and thick lips. An item on the BBC Radio 4 program, Making History Broadcast, in March 2011, examined the history of Peter the Wild Boy, tracing his life in North Church and later in Bergamstead, where a leather and brass collar designed to identify Peter in case he should wander away from the village and inscribed, Peter the Wild Man is preserved at Berkhamstead School. The Cambodian Jungle Girl The so-called Cambodian Jungle Girl is a Vietnamese woman who emerged from the jungle in the Ratanakari province, Cambodia, on January 13, 2007. A family in a nearby village claimed that the woman was their daughter, Rachon Pingen, who had previously disappeared 18 or 19 years previously. The story was covered in most media as one of a feral child who had lived in the jungle for most of her life. However, some reporters and non-governmental organizations questioned this explanation and suggested that she instead might be an unrelated woman who had been held in captivity. The woman stayed with the family until 2016, when a Vietnamese man claimed that the woman was his daughter who had disappeared in 2006 at the age of 23, following a mental breakdown. He was able to provide documentation about the woman's birth and disappearance, and shortly after brought her back to his village in Vietnam. He received the support of her adoptive family as well as the approval of immigration officials. Discovery She came to international attention after emerging filthy, naked, and scarred from the dense jungle 
of Ratakaniri province in remote northeastern Cambodia on January 13th, 2007. After a villager noticed food missing from a lunchbox, he staked out the area, spotted the woman, gathered some friends, and caught her. There have also been reports of a naked man who was seen with the woman and ran away when challenged. Some reports have him carrying a sword, and some villagers do believe that he was a jungle spirit. Theories about the identity After hearing about the incident, 45-year-old Sal Lu, member of the Nong ethnic minority, and a Yado village policeman, traveled to the area and claimed that the woman was his long-lost daughter. He last saw his daughter when she was eight years old in 1988. She was lost in a jungle while tending water buffalo near the border with Vietnam. Her six-year-old sister was lost on the same day and has never been found. He identified the girl based on a scar on her arm, supposedly from a knife accident that occurred prior to the girl's disappearance. And by facial features similar to those of her mother, Rachan Soy. Though DNA testing was scheduled at one point, the family later withdrew consent and the DNA tests were never performed. A visiting Guardian reporter observed that the woman had deep scars on her left wrist and ankle, possibly from being held in captivity, and that her feet did not look as if she lived in the jungle for a long time. She was able to use a spoon without instruction. He called the claim that she was a feral child almost certainly nonsense and stated that, beyond the family's ardent claims to recognize her, there is no evidence that she's really the missing girl, and thought it more likely that the girl was uh, brought up in captivity, somehow escaped, and then found her way to a father who desperately wanted to recover something that he had lost. A human rights NGO also believed that she might have been the victim of abuse as the marks on her arms may have been caused by a restraint such as a rope. We believe that this woman is a victim of some kind of torture, maybe physical or sexual, said Keck Galabru. Life after discovery. The Nong follow no organized religion, but the family took the woman to a Buddhist pagoda to have the monks calm her spirit. One week after being discovered, she experienced difficulties adjusting a civilized life. A Spanish psychologist who visited the woman reported that she made some words and smiled in response to a game involving toy animals and a mirror. When she was thirsty or hungry, she pointed at her mouth. She preferred to crawl rather than to walk upright. The family watched Rachan Penang around the clock to make sure she did not run off back to the jungle, as she attempted to do several times. Her mother constantly had to pull back on her clothes when she tried to take them off. A visiting Guardian reporter described the family as genuinely caring for her and the woman as listless and sad, but restless at night. The NGO Lutado feared that the woman was enduring trauma after returning to society. Pen Bunna, an official at Ad Hoc, another Cambodian human rights group, said that the constant flow of visitors likely caused stress for the woman. She must have experienced traumatic events in the jungle that have affected her ability to speak, he said. On the 25th of September, 2007, Duche Presse Agentura reported that the woman, who had never been able to adjust to village life, had vanished back in the jungle without leaving a trace. In February 2008, the Nam Pen Post reported that the woman, who disappeared for a couple of days, but then returned. The Spanish psychologist was still seeing her, and she adjusted a bit better to her new surroundings, but still would not speak. 
The father was trying to raise money so that he could take his daughter to a spirit healer who could then help exercise the jungle spirits from his daughter. Radio Free Asia reported in July 2008 that the woman was able to feed, bathe, and dress herself, but still would not speak. She laughed while playing with her nieces and nephews, however. In October 2009, agents France Press reported that the woman had refused to eat rice for a month and was admitted to a hospital where a nervous condition was diagnosed. Her father said that she had not adjusted, could not speak, and was always trying to remove her clothes and run away. He asked for charities to take over her care. In December 2009, her father reported that she was eating again, generally improving, and had started to understand and use some words of their native language. On the 25th of May 2010, Rancham Pien fled back to the jungle. Her father said that she went to take a bath in the well behind their house and did not return. In early June, she was found in a latrine about 100 meters from her home after a neighbor heard her crying. Sal Lu, the man who claims to be her father, said, She was discovered in a 10 meter deep toilet. It's an unbelievable story. She spent 11 days there. He added, He said, adding that her body was soaked with excrement up to her chest. We are still wondering how she could get into the toilet, which has a small entrance hole covered in wood, he said, adding that she had been admitted to the hospital following the incident. In September 2010, it was reported that she was being taught healthy habits and social skills by members of the Spanish mental health organization, Psicologos Sin Fronteras. A May 2011 report added that she was visited by the psychologists at least once a week. She preferred to live and sleep in a small chicken coop near the family's home, joining the family for meals every three or four days. She did not speak, but had started to make eye contact with people. Recent Developments In 2013, Sao Lu died. In July 2016, a man named Pell from Vietnam's Gia Lai province, province traveled to the village claiming the woman was his missing daughter named Tak. He claimed that she disappeared in 2006 at the age of 23 following a mental breakdown, indicating that she had survived in the jungle for approximately one year as opposed to the 18 to 19 previously thought. Pell was able to identify a spot on her lip, the scar on her wrist, and an ear condition, in addition to bringing nine relatives and documentation about Tok's birth details and disappearances to support his claim. The adoptive family was supportive of this new claim. In August 2016, after immigration officials spent two weeks reviewing the case, the woman left Cambodia with her family and returned to Vietnam. Vietnamese media have reported that her birth father discovered her through photos on Facebook. The woman never learned how to speak while living with her adopted family in Cambodia, and according to her Vietnamese birth family, she has been that way since birth. <laughs>